Hi guys, this is Krista Lynn, and I'm gonna have to say good morning from Menifee, California. I got up a little early this morning. I've been working on a really interesting chart this week for our weekly winner. Those of you who don't know, if you are interested, you can send me an email. There's a link below and you can send me your, your birth chart information if you would like to take a chance in winning um, a 15 minute free astrological profile of your chart. Now you guys know these charts can take many hours to go through even one-on-one -on -one with someone. So 15 minutes is just a glance and I'm, I'm not able to cover every detail. But you know, I just share what comes to the surface and based on your questions. So this week's weekly winner um, was born October 1st, 1989. And um, I thought it was appropriate to do this video this morning because the moon is in Libra. Doing the astrological weather, we've been following the moon. And the moon usually does a two and a half day cycle in each sign, in case you didn't know. And then he moves to the next. So we've been kind of covering the different changes in the moon, seeing how they affect us personally. So with the moon in Libra right now, I thought this would be appropriate. Do you notice how balanced I'm talking? Yes, I'm feeling very balanced right now. <laughs> Other than my allergy attack I'm having this morning. But I, I snuck outside because everybody's still sleeping. And I've been working on this chart this morning. And I sometimes I work on them and then I'll do the video later. But I'm just so feeling this chart. I thought I better get it out now. So, October 1st, 1989. Wow. This is a really, really interesting chart because... Let's just talk about general a minute. I'm just going to give you a couple of um, a couple of highlights before we get started here. The moon sign, his moon sign is in Libra. His sun sign is in Libra. His ascendant is in Libra. And Mars is in Libra. Wow. You know, when you see lineups like these, I don't know. They just, they really intrigue me. But he has uh, Mercury in Virgo retrograde, make note of that, and Venus in Scorpio. So those are the first things we're going to talk about, and I'm going to probably be talking about a lot of different things. I am going to get be getting into the aspects a little bit more um, to share with you what happens behind the scenes. So when we look at a chart, you know, a lot of times we look at a chart, and I, I think this is an appropriate chart to really try to balance out. Now, I also have some Librian influence. I have Mercury in Libra and Venus in Libra. And sometimes I don't think I see that as much in me. You know, I see other things and I think, well, where is the Libra in me? You know, do I, where is that? But when I read a chart like this, I'm like, oh, okay, I can really identify with a lot of what this person might be going through. Now, I do know a little bit about what he's going through because he sent me, you know, he sent me an email and, you know, a lot of you guys are, are pouring your hearts out to me. I mean, I don't think it's me personally, but I think it's a need to, you know, to say, hey, red flag over here. I, I need some help, you know. I need to help. I'm young. He's born in 1989, so he's 24 years old. He's young. He's at a crossroad getting closer to his first Saturn, and I love his response, like, please, I'm dying for a Saturn, something to change my life. So you are in a change right now. You are in a, in a pretty serious change right now. Um, and you're going through this because the universe is calling you to take a step up and to make some decisions. So let's talk a little bit about Libra here. Now, Libras, um, they spend a lot of time trying not to rock the boat. They really hate conflict. I mean, it's just, it's so unnerving to them. Because in the middle of conflict, their mind and heart and soul, with you, every part of you is just highlighting, ah, we're out of balance. We're out of balance. So when you see somebody getting upset, you see problems coming, you know, you see something starting to erupt um, and it doesn't feel balanced to you or you can't control that and balance it, it's very unnerving, it's very difficult. 
And so you end up a lot of times trying to be everything for everybody. Um, you know, it's difficult because when you do have that need to balance and to get things back to some sort of assembly, um, a Libra many times is willing to take the low road so somebody else can be okay. Um, they, they know that whatever it is they have to do to get things back in balance. And sometimes that can even be, you know, white lies. And, and, and a Libra will justify a lie, and I'm not even talking about a bad lie, I'm just talking about any kind of lie, you know, to, they'll justify it because it keeps a semblance, it keeps balance, it keeps everybody okay. And they'll take the brunt of it, you know. So you do see some codependency here, you know, we use our psycho babble words, but you know, a tendency to, again, just, you know, say yes when you really want to say no just because it's easier, just because it restores balance quicker for somebody else. Meanwhile, meanwhile, you continue to put your feelings aside in relationships. And if you're not careful, those scales will start to really drop. And that's when Libras get resentful. Now, when a Libra gets resentful, they're a little bit more like passive aggressive because again they're not going to come out with all their cards and and they don't even want to get that emotionally charged because that would bring their emotions out of balance so a lot of times they find subtle little ways to get control back for their lives they're not even wanting to necessarily hurt other people um, but they'll do whatever they have to do, and if it's behind, you know, kind of sneaky or manipulative for themselves, and nobody even knows it all the better, but they can get back where they need to be. So I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it makes sense to me. <laughs> so we can have a lack of direction. Um, we can have an inability to make a stand. Um, you know, they don't like to be the one to blame. You know, that's a blame. Um, they can be on the fence, middle ground, middle road. So um, I'd asked you a specific question in the email, and I said, if nothing were stopping you, what would you want to do? What would you want to be if you had no fears, no inhibitions? Because a lot of times, you know, what's in our heart is what we're, we're being called to do throughout our life in different stages. And, you know, when I asked you, you said, as a, as a young child, I loved art, but I've kind of lost that. You know, I'd like to be a director. I'd like to, you know, you had all of these great ideas, and yet something's stopping you. Something's holding you back. So let's find out what might be doing that and what we can do about it. You know, I'm here to share, yes, sometimes we get difficult energies that we have to work with, guys. And when I'm talking about, as I go a little deeper into this chart, as I get into the squares and stuff, there are quite a few squares in your chart. What is a square? A square is when one planet squares another one. That's three signs away. They get a square. Okay, does that look like a square? <laughs> they get a square. And when they have a square, it's a, it's a kind of a block, you know, it's, a, it's like, where are we going to go from here? What are we going to do? We're stuck. We have a lot of energy, but where is it going to go? It's kind of it's kind of in this, you know, combustion stage. And so, you know, people get afraid of those. But what you have to understand is, don't forget, there is powerful energy. There's always choices, you guys. We have free will. I read a post recently in, on an astrology page, and a, and a lady was saying, oh, my gosh, she, you know, was coming to learn about astrology. Oh, my gosh. Are we destined, doomed? Do we have no choices? Are we like, you know, pawns on a chessboard, you know? And it's like, no, we have choices. We have free will. Where we get lost is when we're not aware of the energies we're working with, the different ideas and thoughts and philosophies we're working with. And we look at other people and we go, why can't I be like that person? And we're all created uniquely. There's a purpose and a plan for each person. And um, I believe that, yeah, you know, there's people deal with a lot of difficult things. But I believe you have a lot to work on here. But we have to get you in a little bit more confident place 
of making a decision for you. So without going into a lot of personal detail, because I did read a little some personal things on the email, so I just want to share in general um, for the audience that a lot of times when you see a Libra ascendant, obviously we're going to look at the houses that follow beyond that. Um, the second house is in Scorpio, the third house is in Sagittarius, fourth house in Capricorn, fifth house in Aquarius, sixth house in Pisces, the seventh house in Aries, eighth house in Taurus, um, ninth house in Gemini, tenth house in Cancer, eleventh in Leo, and twelfth in Virgo. So you're going to see that lineup coming down. And I do know, because I do know quite a few um, very close people to me with an ascendant in Libra, and there's been a common thread, and we see it in the fourth house of Capricorn. A lot of times you see in the early childhood in the family of um, a Libra ascendant, very strong satir satirian parents, um, family. You know, there's, there's a lot of times, you know, just, you know, strict discipline, and they're raised in a very disciplined way. And sometimes that's hard on them because, again, remember, they don't want to rock the boat. So those erratic emotions or those strong opinions a lot of times can be very unsettling for a Libra because they're always trying to find the middle ground. And if they can't make sense out of something or find a way to make sense out of it, it will they'll obsess over it. They'll obsess. They'll obsess until they balance that out. You're young right now, so you're going through a period of time where you know, you're seeing your life and your childhood and your family as one thing right now. But that's going to completely radically change, especially in the next seven years. You're going to begin to cross over and start to become who you are needing to be, not who you are in identity with your family. We always have our families and we always have those connections, but they do change. You're 24 years old, so this is the time you need to start looking forward and looking out. And what am I going to be doing? Now, I want to talk a little bit, because this time goes so fast and it drives me crazy, you guys. See, it takes so long and I don't want to stop. So I want to get to the point. Um, Venus in Scorpio. I want to talk to you about that because this is where I want you to draw some of your black and white energy, some of your decision-making energy. Venus is the things we love. Venus is the things that we value. Venus is the things that make us happy. And yes, this can be a very, very intense place um, to have Scorpio um, in Venus. But because of so much of this constant weighing and gray areas and taking the middle ground and all of these things, it's really easy for you to lose that black and white side that you need to make a stand. And I want you to learn more about Venus and Scorpio. You see things, you're very detailed, you're, you're able to, you know, scan the situation. As you're young right now, though, that can be a lot of deep emotions, sometimes even depressions. Scorpios can suffer from depressions. They can... Um, because it's all about regeneration and death, and they go to the depth of places. So in your love sign, the things you love, you are very passionate about, and you're able to go to a very deep place. This may feel confusing for you right now, because there's a part of you that's one way, and then, it's, you know, it's like, wait a minute, I am intense. I do have beliefs. I do know what's right. I do see black and white. So using this... The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is Mercury in Virgo retrograde. One of the discussions that we had is that you felt like you had a difficult time communicating with people and wanting to talk and feeling comfortable communicating. Whenever we see retrograde, a couple of things you want to think about. Um, retrograde, especially in Mercury, does tend to be more inner reflective, inner communicator, behind the scenes, not out in the front. They do have a little more difficult time talking because they're always overanalyzing everything they're going to say. They're afraid that um, maybe something they said, you know, what are people going to think? What are people going to say? They're overanalyzing those things. Um, 
but it also allows you to go to the deeper levels of research, the deeper levels of investigation in life, whatever it is you're studying or researching, whether it's art, whether you want to be a director, whether you want to be a photographer, whether you, you definitely need to be doing something creative. There's just no two ways about it, um, unless you're going to be in a lawyer, which is why I wore my little lawyer suit today. Do I look like I'm a Libra? <laughs> um, you definitely need to be doing that. <clears throat> what are you doing right now? This is the time in your life to be studying. Ninth house in Gemini, that tells me that's your higher learning. That tells me that you are, you could be a teacher. You definitely love to learn about a lot of different subjects. So if you're not in school and you're not doing something, art school, I don't care what it is, you need to get in that place because your Saturn is coming in the next few years and you want to be ready. You want to go into that with all the skills and talents that you can to make it on the other side to see what you're going to be and do. It's all cycles and it's all preparation for life, you guys. Every part is extremely important. Um, a couple other little things. I see uh, Sixth House in Pisces. Um, that's your work. That's kind of that place that, you know, there's a lot of descriptions of the sixth house, but I'm just going to focus on um, that you're going to enjoy artistic pursuits. You like doing things alone. You like studying alone. You like creating alone. You like doing your artwork. You like writing in quiet places. Do it. I like to be alone too. As much as I get out here, oh my gosh, you guys, if you saw how much time I spend alone and I'm learning to enjoy that. It's not a bad thing to be a behind the scene person. They do the greatest work. I mean, you watch a movie and we see the end result. I mean, do you have any idea what goes on sometimes for up to a year behind the scenes, the directors, the cast, the, you know, all the different things it takes to make the one movie? So it doesn't matter if you're a behind the scene guy and that's where you're comfortable, be a behind the scene guy. You have huge powerful stores of energy all through your chart I see. Um, you do have Mars squaring Saturn. A lot of times that gives you that, it's a, it's a hard time trusting yourself, a hard time trusting in your ability to go after things. And it, it, it can be, you know, you can develop a resentfulness that life passes you by. So, yeah, I'm talking to you right now saying, you experienced that, but are you going to stay there? Are you going to let it take you down? Are you going to let it, are you going to let it stop you? No, you're going to say, yeah, I feel that way. Okay, no problem. What do I got to do about it? I got to just trust that I have been given the qualities, the skills, the abilities, the philosophies, the mindset to participate in this world. That's the saddest thing that I see. Um, I, I don't know. I'm going to go off on a little tangent, I guess. Let me check my time. I know. I'm, okay. A few more minutes. Um, I was watching, I don't know. I get on these YouTube things. I ended up on this, the prisons of women. And they were interviewing. It was a big documentary. And I'm watching these women and their life. You know, they're in life for life, prison for life. You know, and they don't have their children. They're young. And they're just, they are just can't even believe they're, you know, they make these decisions here when they're young and now they have a life sentence and they're like becoming completely different people and they're like, I'm not even that person anymore, but I'm here. And I, I don't know, I don't usually make too many comments on YouTube, but I guess I was drawn a little bit to make a comment about, I just, my heart went out to these ladies and some guy's like, heart went out to these ladies, what about the people they killed? And I'm like, well, of course, you know, of course, that's like un, in my mind, of course. But anybody that doesn't know the power that they've been given and anybody that doesn't take full advantage of the one life that we know of, we definitely know of this life, you know, we don't know about that life, we don't know about this life, but we know about this one. Take full advantage of what you've been given. You're created to do many, many things. You've got awesome things going on. And this generation, I keep talking about it, this generation was... Saturn and Capricorn, Uranus and Capricorn, Neptune and Capricorn is coming up. They are going to be the ones to establish a structure for all the artistic ability coming from this Piscinian, Neptunian movement. Neptunian, Piscinian, Piscinian, Neptunian movement. <laughs> I'm waking up now. Um, 
we need you guys. We need this generation to give us a structure because we're going to all be just like off, you know, out in our own lands making art. Well, anyone could be creative and make art if it doesn't have a structure, if it doesn't have a platform, if it doesn't have boundaries and that people can use it. We need the earth. We need Capricorn. We need you. Your time is coming. You know, if you're in a relationship, so you're surrounding yourself with things that are not healthy for you, mentally, emotionally, you're 24 years old, you can make a decision and make a change. It's okay. And you know, I did look at your chart and I see that you basically, your whole entire chart's kind of like on one side. You know, it's, it's like you're all over here. And you're right, you don't have any fire and you don't have any other, you know, there's a couple little things I see in your houses, but basically you're on one side and you want balance. You know what? It's about allowing people in your life because Libras want partners. They want connections. It's about allowing relationships in your life that balance you out. So you may need some Leo friends. You may need some Aries friends. Your seventh house is Aries, which probably means you'll be attracted to that Aryan type personality. Um, you may even have that in your relationships. Just remember, they will take the role. They will take the lead. They will be the warrior of your life in a good or bad way. <laughs> they will take it. But you kind of need it. You need someone to say, hey, you can do it and make that decision. You know, um, I think that's one reason a lot of times Libras wait till the last minute to make decisions, or I don't know if this is just me. I procrastinate to the last minute because at the last minute, I'm forced to make a decision. I have to press the button. I just make it. And it's kind of like the adrenaline, I get this adrenaline rush, anxiety of, I got to make a decision, make a decision, just do it. And when I wait to the last minute and the time's ticking, <laughs> I have to make it. But I think in life, you've got this, you've got this Scorpio Venus right now that's going to help you um, really see clearly and rely on that. You know, you're a nice guy, get into art, you know. Do what's on your heart. Don't let anybody stop you. And um, I don't know. I'm sure there was more I wanted to say. Do you see how many papers? This is all you. <laughs> this is all you. So you guys can see. Even when I do a 15-minute, I, I study it like I'm going to do a two-hour. So if you want to know more about my services on the side, I do also do this just like this. I can send you a video. Um, I do have some different packages, prices, times, so it's affordable. And you guys can email me. I'll tell you about that. I don't want to say goodbye with all that other than comment below. Um, keep sending me messages. Keep commenting. I hope this was helpful. I know you're going through a lot of changes right now. Just don't throw the baby out with the bathwater as you leave those things in your life. It seems like you have a really good mother that's supportive of you. And just surround yourself. Surround yourself with artists. Get out. Go places. Go get that. Venus Librian mind lit up and, you know, get inspired. Now's your time and you've got a wonderful life ahead of you if you choose to use your gifts and talents you've been given. So good luck and I hope that was helpful.